back and forth between the Grand Valley, Saginaw Valley game, so we are going to keep covering that one as well. Uh, we have five minutes and 15 seconds left in that game. But what we're going to watch now, this is going to be a big decider. This is obviously going to determine who's going to go on to face Grand Valley in the final. We've got our 6v6 overtime, Central Michigan versus JMU. Seven balls, not ten balls. Seven balls. Josh Raymer, obviously not infallible. Jazz, you want to hold this thing or no? Or nah. Alrighty, we are back. This is going to be big. So as we get started here, let's check and make sure our messages. Yes, Spencer, they are in fact done. Like I said, we'll keep you updated on it. Four minutes left in that game. Uh, they are still playing, but it's just kind of, both teams are kind of messing around. Grand Valley very easily gonna win this, uh, not wanting to tire themselves out. So both teams just kind of cycling through some of their roster. So we wanted to make sure that we were able to broadcast this match as much as possible. So here we go. Both teams still at full strength. Now, Jazzy, do, do, they, do both teams have a 10-second shot clock for the duration of this overtime? It sounds like it, Okay, because yeah. I'm hearing the counting start at 6. So that must be, you know, I kind of like that rule. It keeps this sped up. I like starting off with that 10-second Shot clock. As slow as this game has been so far, I wouldn't be surprised if they take this 25 minute clock almost all the way down for this overtime. I don't believe we're actually using a clock, Jazzy. It's supposed to be 25 minutes in overtime. Well, it looks like we're probably just gonna run it into the ground. Thank you, Spencer, we do have our moments. All right, so let's see. From Spencer Jardine, can I give a huge shout out to Saginaw Valley captain? Max Seiler. Max Seiler. Sorry, I can't read this really small. Uh, had to take the team back over three months into the season in the last year and had Saginaw Valley with class. On and and led Saginaw court. Valley with class oh, on sorry. and off the court. One of the NCDA's best. Sorry about that, Spencer. The text on here was really, really tiny. But definitely a big shout out to him. They did a fantastic job all tournament. It was great getting to talk to them. Let's see, Central Michigan still with all six of their players in. JMU down one. Uh, we have a question. When will the final game be? It will be between the winner of this game and yes. That is correct. So the winner of this game will go on to play Grand Valley. Uh, after this game is over, and again, there's no way to tell how long this overtime could go. This could very easily go 25. The Spencer said, yeah, there is no clock for OT. Yeah, so there is no clock for this. So it's until, oh my goodness, wow. That would have been huge. He, he, running backwards, fell backwards trying for the catch, uh, got his hands on it, but when he hit the ground, it popped out, so it didn't count as a catch, unfortunately, but a really nice attempt. Wow, and Central Michigan taking out another GMU player. JMU, sorry. One minute, 30 seconds left on the Saginaw Grand Valley. Grand Valley with the numbers advantage over there. Still, but again, both teams kind of cycling through their benches. Timeout called, I believe. Ball's over. Ball's over, oh goodness gracious. JMU is in big trouble here. But to answer your question uh, about when the final game will be, after this, we obviously have to do a little bit of rearranging because we've got to get it positioned so everyone can be around one court. I would say it shouldn't be more than 15, 20 minutes after this. Obviously, we want to give both teams a chance to take a break, uh, have a quick talk, get some water, uh, and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll be back as soon as possible. And I think we're going to have, try to have two streams for that, one pointed toward one side of the court, one pointed toward the other, potentially maybe even a stream down on the court. So we'll keep you all updated on what the plans are for the championship game. Uh, that is correct. There is no clock, uh, clock in O-Team, but yes, there is a shot clock. We did just see a shot clock violation. So 
Central Michigan disputing a call made by the uh, sideline referee. CMU upset with a couple of calls from the sideline referee, a couple of things that they were sure were confirmed hits, and uh, the referee called as going off the ball first. All right, and with that, Grand Valley, Grand Valley and Sac... Okay, guys, that's enough of that. Grand Valley and Saginaw Valley, go ahead and... Okay, seriously, enough of the buzzer, thank you. 22 just kind of eliminated for JMU. Grand Valley and Saginaw Valley calling it quits here. Uh, Grand Valley winning three to zero. JMU had three, went back down to two. Number 22, Wilhelm was eliminated. JMU dispu disputing some calls as well. This is where we start to see nerves and tension coming up. Both teams disputing almost every single call made by the sideline referee. Two players still left in for the Dukes. Saginaw Valley and Grand Valley pressing up against the curtain, wanting to see the last couple of minutes of this match. Catch, catch made, oh my goodness, and with that, with that only a one-man numbers advantage for Central Michigan, and what went from looked like it was gonna be an easy win for Central Michigan, the Dukes pulling back into it. Started to make a preemptive call. I thought that this game was going to be over pretty quick. No, an attempted catch by number 42 for JMU. Had it slipped out of his hands and bounced on the ground, so it's no good. Yeah, I agree, I agree. All down to Gromer. And this is really unfortunate. Central Michigan having that brick wall to throw against, meaning hard enough throws are gonna roll straight back to him. Shot clock violation. Man, that is unfortunate. A lot, a lot of pressure here on double zero for JMU. CMU calling for a timeout as well. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Jazzy, but we have seen a Grand Valley Central Michigan game at Nationals for the final before, have we not? It was in this building four years ago, 2011, Central Michigan knocked off Grand Valley for their first NCDA title. Wow, so quite the, uh, I mean, life's full of second chances, I suppose. Gromer's had some catches this game. I know he's more known for his power arm, but he has had some catches, so he's got to have one here. I mean, that's really his only chance. These guys are just too good at catching to take out four of them. So if he can get one catch here, he's got a chance. I was, I was unaware that teams got uh, timeouts during overtime. I'm not going to pretend to know the overtime rules anymore. I know it's 6v6, but that's about it. Past that, there are no rules. And away we go. And with that, Central Michigan is going to take the win. JMU not happy. Water all over the court. <laughs> and that'll do it. Your championship game is set. A rematch from four years ago here in this very building. Central Michigan versus Grand Valley State.
All right, so we are going to give both teams a chance to rest. We're going to charge up our batteries, so we've got plenty of battery to record this game from as many angles as possible.